Crop circles? What's up guys? Today I want to give you some serious things to consider before you go out and buy an auto mower. For those of you that have been a hard no on robo mowers, this video is probably going to give you more fuel for that fire. For those of you who've been looking into them and want to see some of the pros and cons, this is going to give you some good perspective on what they can do and what they can't do. Now, again, if you're totally anti robo mower, you might see some little nuggets of gold in here, but I just want to be very straightforward that after two years of owning a robo mower, this is my experience. So look, I'm going to tell you, I am 100% nitpicking here. These are very small inconveniences to something that actually saves a significant amount of time and life. And overall, my experience with the mower is positive. Um, I have way more good things to say about it than bad, but I think it's very important that people understand what they're getting into. This will not 100% take care of everything. And hear that? All right, so if you look behind me, my turf is looking pretty good. Actually, there is a little bit of a dingy color to it, and that's because the mower blades are very dull and they need to be changed. One side of it is considerably more chewed up than the other, so these are gonna go straight into the garbage. I've got new ones right here. I wanna say that the there's like a six pack or an eight pack of these. You just buy them on Amazon and they're like nine or 10 or $12 a piece or something. But these are cheap. They're cheap little razor blades that are on a very expensive mower. And if that scares you, you're paying a lot of money for something and all there really is is this little razor, it's a problem. So as you can see, it's busy. It's hard at work behind me. It's doing exactly what it's supposed to. I have that thing come on at eight o'clock in the morning and it doesn't shut off until midnight. Now, I'm considering letting that thing mow a little bit further because freaking deer have been coming along and that actually scares them off the lawn at night. So put that in the bonus category. When this thing runs at night, it keeps any sort of creatures that you don't really want around from coming on the lawn because it's got little headlights, so that's kind of cool. But now here's something that I never thought I would see, and I guess this is just my second year running the mower, so I didn't really know. My grass is too thick. Yeah, that's really a thing. Now, if I was mowing it up higher and keeping it up at a taller setting, it isn't having as much of an issue, but you can hear it right now. struggling and probably it's going to stall out. Now I've been trying to progressively lower the cut height down to get this back down to the 0.78 inches which is its lowest cut height without the fairway cut and it is not working right now. Interestingly enough your grass can be too thick and too healthy for an auto mower. Crop circles? Here's something else to consider. That right there. With this particular mower and with most of them out there, not all of them, because there are some changes that have happened, but with this mower, this is a Husky, this does not mow in any pattern. It goes all over the place and it does cut the whole lawn. And once you get it set to the height you want, you can't really tell that it just kind of cuts weird patterns. But as you're lowering the cut height, you can definitely see it. You can see the tracks everywhere it's gone today. You can obviously see this circle that's going on behind me. And it's going to look like that until you get the grass height set to where you want it. And so for those of you who are like OCD and, and need to have straight lines, go ahead and rule that out. I wouldn't even look at the ones that do mow in straight lines because it's never going to give you the same feeling of mowing with a push mower or a real mower or anything else. Once everything is set back to a height where you like it and you, you're just comfortable with where it is, you'll never know. You won't notice. The grass just maintains the same color and the same height and there's no signs of any tracks or anything at that point. Okay, so here's another one. I have edging all around my lawn and I have beds. Now, there's a mess behind me and that was caused by deer who like to bunk down here at night. I have to come out here every day and kick that stuff off. Sometimes this mulch will get stuck in there and it'll, it'll block the uh, cutting system. So I have to make sure that this is clear. But the more important piece, and it's something I've talked about before that it's not like it's a pain in the ass, but again, for those of you who might be OCD and you don't really have a lot of time to spend out here, the collar. Now I have like a six inch fringe that runs around this thing where the mower doesn't touch. And I probably could have buried my line a little bit further. And since for the most part, the beds are flush, 
The mower could have rolled in there, but I had a feeling it was just gonna get stuck because there's certain areas where it just doesn't, it's not quite level between the grass and the beds. And that could have been a problem. So what I do is I come out here with my string trimmer whenever it becomes very apparent, which is every couple of days, and I cut the edges down. Now here's the problem with that. I don't typically have weeds in my lawn. I don't use herbicides out here and I don't use pre-emergence, not in the main body of the lawn. However, the fringes get weeds and they get weeds because it doesn't get cut as much. And because it's being cut with a string trimmer, it's always under stress. So we can go around the edge of the lawn and I can show you everything where I cut with a string trimmer and the grass doesn't look as good. So that again is one of those potentially problematic things. Now. Sometimes I'll do things a little bit different. I'll grab my, my regular gas mower and just run around the edge and cut it down to height and that works just fine. So I'd have to start making uh, more of an effort to do that, but then I start to wonder like, why am I out here mowing edges? It takes me about the same length of time to come out here and do that than if I just like ran the whole freaking lawn. So. Again, that's something to consider. See that thing? That's another reason not to buy an auto mower. I've seen guys build dog houses and different things like that, but I am constantly struggling with that thing going back to the dock. I've done all sorts of stuff to try to keep it from driving off its little perch and it just, I'm finally to the point where it's working better, but I'm gonna have to build it something to go in there. So you're gonna have to pay for room and board if you get an auto mower too. So as far as the cons go, I think that's pretty much it. I, I, I can't think of really any other reason that would prevent somebody from purchasing one of these, especially now because battery mowers are so expensive. These have come down in price. There's more and more entries into the marketplace. There's higher competition. People are busier, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So, uh, you know, for you or for the average person out there, I don't know if it's going to be what people are gonna you know, quickly adopt, but it will be adopted over time, just like Roombas and everything else. Now, just because I hit you with those negatives, I just want you to understand that I love this thing. I think it's great. Uh, the, like I said, those minor inconveniences mean absolutely nothing. It takes a couple seconds to come up and change it. I've got an alert that happens on my phone and I can just make adjustments on the fly. So. The grass is cut all the time, it's virtually weed free, it's thick as hell, it's recycling every clipping, it's mowing every single day of the week, and overall, I don't have to do that much. So, overwhelmingly, I support this system. Just know that there are a few drawbacks. There's a few drawbacks with anything we do, gotta take the good with the bad, blah, blah, blah. But, now that I'm on year two, and I'm coming to the end of it, I just wanted you guys to see exactly how I felt about it and what it's doing for me right now. That's it. Hope you guys have a great one. I'll talk to you later.